Hi guys, Fred from AF Math and Engineering, back here again. Uh, we're just going to continue the problem that we just left off on. If you're coming from there, uh, welcome back. And let's, let's start. Okay, so what do we have here? We have established that the angles of twist of AB and BC, the sum of those must equal zero. Okay, we've, and you know what, I did forget, but let's draw this just so we don't get confused there. Okay. All right, so we've established the internal resisting torques by, in, in terms of TA, okay, in terms of one variable, that's important. Don't put it in terms of anything else, okay? And what we're going to do now, after having drawn our torque diagram here, is we're gonna plug into our angle of twist equation, okay? So let's write that out. Okay, so theta is equal, and you know, we've discussed this many times before, TL over GJ. And you know what, this time, however, we are going to sub in the torques in terms of TA, and we're going to solve for TA, and that's just all we're going to be doing, okay? So we have, for section TAB, we have negative TA, right? Just coming right from here. The length of the shaft is 600, millimeters, we'll, we'll put that into meters for now, okay? And what's G? That's a good question. G is given in the question as 50 GPA for brass, 50 gigapascals, okay? We're going to change that. Okay, and we are going to solve for J. Okay, so, all right, that's a plus. There we go. And just for this question, guys, we're gonna write out all the steps here. Uh, if, if you don't want to watch the, uh, the steps being written out, you wanna just fast forward to the answer or try it yourself, you know, pause here and see if you get the same answer. All right, let's continue. So, we're going to move on to the section BC of our angle of twist, okay? So that was uh, theta B with respect to A, okay? We just wrote that down there. Now, theta C with respect to B, we're gonna come over here and we have 15 kilonewton meters. Okay, we're gonna to wanna to change that to newton meters. So we're gonna multiply that by a thousand. And that is our T for section BC. Our length is given as 700 millimeters or 0 0.7 meters. Okay, and let's go to our GPA given for the Monel, which is 70. Okay, and our J. Now, for the J, let's be careful, okay, because the shaft is hollow, okay? Don't just put 150 or 0.15, I mean, that's completely wrong, you're gonna get a zero immediately. So let's take into consideration the thickness as well, like we discussed before in the earlier video. So we have a 0 0.15 to the four, minus, okay, and it's going to be, it's not going to be 0.14, it's going to be 0.13 because we have to subtract that thickness twice when we're dealing with the diameter. Making sure to take the fourth power of both of the values there. And this is all equal to zero, okay? It's all equal to zero, and all we have to do here is solve for TA. And it's as simple as that. Uh, you know what, do the work by yourself, work it all out, I mean, it'll take forever on the video, but pause the video, do this yourself, and put it in your calculator. I mean, a lot of people think, ah, the exam's gonna come, I'll just, yeah, I'll just do it when the exam comes and I'll copy the answer and give it to my professor when I do my assignments. Don't do that. Use your calculator right now and, and really put all this into your calculator and solve for TA, you know, because you're gonna make little mistakes, make them now, don't make them on the test, all right? So, solving for TA, we are going to get a value of 12.88 kilonewton meters, okay? So, now that we have TA, what do we do? Well, that's a good question. 
what we need to do now is we have to go back to this equation because this isn't this isn't done yet. We need to solve for TAB and we need to solve for TBC. That's what we need to do. So we can plug it back into our two our system of equations here and we can solve for TAB and we can solve for TBC because we have TA now. So let's do that. Okay, that's simple. That's just plugging the number straight in. And TBC, if you plug in 12.88 into this equation here, you're going to end up with 2.12 kilonewton meters, okay? Now, what was the question asking? Let's not get confused. Let's remember why we're doing all this in the first place, and it's to find the maximum shearing stress in each shaft, okay? So, the negative sign in this case isn't going to come into account. We're simply going to plug in to our tau formula for both of these, okay? And we're going to get an answer. Let's do it. Okay, converting kilonewton meters to newtons. And this is TC over J, guys. I'm not going to stop writing that just because we're, we're past that point. You should know that tau is equal to TC over J, okay? Which is what we're solving for here. Okay. Our diameter is 0.2 meters, so we're uh, taking half of that for our C. And our J, as if, if you remember us doing this before, Okay, so our shearing stress, the maximum shearing stress in our shaft AB, which is brass, is going to be 8.2 MPA. I'll just give that a little blue here so you guys can see that. Okay, and for the C value, for the uh, hollow shaft, we're just going to take half of the outer diameter. Don't worry about the inner diameter when we're finding uh, our C. C refers to the half of the maximum diameter of the shaft, okay? And we're running out of room here, but I think we'll make do. Okay, don't forget, again, don't make the mistake of using 0.14, use 0.13. Remember, it's a hollow shaft. We're going to Calculate that, and we're going to get a value of 7.36 MPA, and that's for the Monell shaft. Okay, so, uh, sorry for the small writing at the bottom, but uh, I hope you guys can see that. And we've done what the question is asked. We've solved for the maximum shearing stress, stress in the brass shaft and in the Monell shaft. And uh, click on the next video. We're going to do a, a couple more problems on this sketch here, so thanks for watching.